my name is Aleika Zwan, and I'm the Alamo Special Events Coordinator. Thank you so much for joining us for the grand opening of our new exhibition about the life and the knife of James Bowie. We're excited to have all of you here with us today, including our special guests from Sideserve Cake Studio and our partners from Visit San Antonio to celebrate this project. Before we share a little bit about who James Bowie was and how the exhibition came together, we want to take a moment to thank our donors, some of which are here with us today, whose enthusiasm for the Alamo and history made this exhibit possible. We also want to thank the many staff members at the Alamo and the Texas General Land Office who worked tirelessly to bring together a special story to share with our visitors. Their passion, knowledge, and contributions truly brought the story you're about to see to life. Now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Winders, Director of Education and Curation at the Alamo, to share a few words about James Bowie and his famous knife. Good morning. Actually, good morning. The, uh, James Bowie is one of the Alamo's big three. And you could probably name those with me. James Bowie, William Bear Travis, and who would the other one be? Crockett. Crockett. Somebody named David Crockett. And everybody knows, I don't want to say everybody knows, but they're very common people come here going, Bowie, Crockett, Travis. But they're often presented as one-dimensional characters. Now, Bowie is a, is a vicious knife fighter. Uh, Travis is a young 26-year-old who's uncertain of himself, and he finds his, his inner strength here. It's a coming-of-age story for him. And Crockett, of course, is the folksy frontiersman from Tennessee that amuses people with stories. All of these are true, but yet they're just a minuscule slice of who these people were. And this exhibit examines James Bowie, and it has three parts. It talks about his life, and in his life, what we have sought to do is, um, is, to, is to bring him to life, present him as a real person. He's representative of the westward movement coming from Kentucky, through Missouri, Louisiana, and then Texas. And in a sense, he represents what was happening at that time. He's sort of the leading edge of the Western movement. Now the knife that bears his name is extremely important. In the 1830s, the United States was a relative new country and it was looking for a new identity. And so there was a shunning of European literature, European art, and the idea was we want to have our own culture. And where in English history you might look at Excalibur and King Arthur as the fitting weapon for the English people, the Bowie knife became the fitting weapon to represent the young American nation. And then the other part, of course, is why is this important? And again, the Bowie knife works its way into American literature, American pop culture. Today, you'll probably find soldiers that carry Bowie knives off to Afghanistan and other places. So it has become an, an icon, a cultural icon. It's part of Americana. Now, why are exhibits like this important? They're important because we like to think that everybody remembers the Alamo. But when we ask people, often they say, well, I remember it, but I don't know what I'm supposed to remember. And the larger story is that we often think that people remember history. And they remember tidbits, and so it takes a periodic refreshing of the public memory to let them know why the past is important and that it's still connected to them. 
And so exhibits like this for people who already know the history, they might find it interesting. We hope that people who are memorizing, trying to remember why they should remember the Alamo, they've heard of James Bowie and they've certainly heard of David Bowie. It's why is this important to me? And so that's what we want this exhibit to do, is to connect people to history. Thank you very much, and I think you'll enjoy this exhibit. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Alamo. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I think I've told you this before, probably 15 or 60 times when I've come down here, and I think you have one of the best jobs in the world, because you have this site, and you get to tell this story every day. Uh, my name is Brian Preston. I'm the Communications Director at the Texas General Land Office. Now, why is the land office here? Well, the state legislature decided to put the land office and the Alamo together as a marriage about six years ago, and so we work together, and we work together on this exhibit. So, we've been on a mission for about the last 18 months here to build this exhibit. We built this exhibit entirely in-house at the land office, and with Bruce's team and Ernesto Rodriguez and the rest of the team here at the Alamo with our team at the land office, uh, Mark Lambert, Daniel Alonzo, the curators. And this is a Texas grown, Texas true exhibit. We built it right here. I'm a fifth generation Texan myself and the chance to work on an exhibit at the Alamo about Jim Bowie is a thrill, uh, an absolute thrill. So for these last 18 months we've been on a mission and hopefully when you see this exhibit you'll see that we've accomplished it. I'd also like to thank uh, my boss, uh, Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush, for giving me a chance to be a part of this and for creating the momentum along with Phil Collins that we see, that we see all this reimagining work happening here at the Alamo. Now this exhibit is called Bowie, Man, Life, Legend. Um, Jim Bowie was about six feet tall, so a little taller than me with kind of brownish reddish hair. Um, not actually physically larger than life, but certainly he lived a life of consequence and a purpose. His character and his knife were forged in fire and steel on the Texas frontier and on the Louisiana frontier and the Kentucky frontier before that. He was loyal to his friends and he was feared by his enemies, which was a good thing to be on the frontier. And that's kind of what happens when you're accosted by about a dozen men and you fight them all with just a knife in your hand. And you win the, the battle and you become a famous man. Uh, while probably not fearless and certainly not perfect, he was undoubtedly courageous. And he showed that in every day of his life and he certainly showed that here at the Alamo. We have the Texas that we have today because of what he and his fellow Texians and Tejanos did 181 years ago on this very site. The crushing defeat at the Alamo inspired the shocking victory at San Jacinto and Texas soon rose among the nations. It's up to us now to understand all that we can about them and we hope that this exhibit helps folks to do that, helps folks to understand why Bowie mattered, why his life mattered, why what happened here mattered. The questions that we have about him, what he did, why he did it, why was there a battle here in the first place, what, was, what were the conditions and the context. Those questions, the internet does not, does not have a good hot take on. We have hot takes on everything else. We go around with our cell phones everywhere. Technology can make us feel like we're smarter than we actually are. What we want to do with this exhibit is connect the facts, the knife, the man, the, the facts of his life to the why, so that we can create a little bit maybe of understanding and wisdom to, to connect all of these things together. So this exhibit, Bowie Man Life Legend, is a small attempt at getting to the past, but in a way that looks like it came from the future. And you'll know what I mean by that when you go see the exhibit. What we want to do is reach rising generations, generations who are always connected, who look into now, we want to, we want them to look into the past, but also see the values that were on display at the time of the battle, the, battles of, of the values of faith and tenacity and courage, the value of sacrificing in the present to create a brighter future. Those values still stand here as the Alamo does, as it has for 300 years. Those are the values upon which Texas stands itself. So I should probably say a few words about the future before wrapping up. You've seen a lot of work that's going on around here in the Alamo, a lot of new faces here, and a lot of momentum here. We are literally reimagining the Alamo as we speak right now. We've made a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, progress. Now I'm sure that when the Spanish missionaries laid the first foundations, and the Masons laid the first foundations on this site in 1724, they had no idea that it would still be here. They really didn't found it to stand here for 300 years. They founded it to found a great city and to spread the gospel to the Indians who were here at the time, and they succeeded in both. Look at the city that's around us now. This is a great city. This is the key city of the American Southwest, the key military city for Texas and for the United States. That's San Antonio. So they succeeded. 
they built this little mission out of mud and limestone. It's still standing here, but the ravages of time have taken their toll. So it's up to us now to, to stand and defend the Alamo and to preserve it for future generations, and we're doing that. So it's amazing to have seen the city of San Antonio and the state of Texas come together as we have over the past two years, Texans from both parties and from no party at all working together for the Alamo. Mayor Taylor and the city council here in San Antonio, Commissioner Bush, Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Patrick, the state representatives and senators, and I understand that there's a representative from State Representative Diego Bernal's office, Anita Fernandez, here today. I want to thank her for being here. I just want to thank everyone who's been involved in this process. There's still a lot of work to do. So just to wrap up, we owe Jim Bowie and his fellow heroes here at the Texas Revolution so much. We can honor them and what they fought for by how we treat the Alamo right now. The Alamo deserves our best. Bowie, man, life legend is one small way that we can honor them now. So we hope you enjoy it. We hope you tell your family and your friends about it. We hope you tweet about it, you post about it on Facebook, and you help us spread the word. And if you know folks who haven't made their summer travel plans yet, we hope you remember the Alamo and bring them here. And with that, I'll introduce Dave and Natalie Sidesurf. They are the artists and the geniuses behind Sidesurf Kick Studios, Sidesurf Studios in Austin, Texas. Thank you. about one more round of applause for these guys. 18 months they put into this. And it looks amazing. So this is this is really, really incredible. Um, as Brandon mentioned, I'm Dave, and this is my wife Natalie Sidesurf, and we own Sidesurf Cake Studio, uh, located in Austin. Uh, we're here today actually filming uh, for a new show we have on Food Network called Texas Cake House. Um, but we are supremely, supremely honored to be a part of this. This is an amazing event. Um, so. Our small contribution to this event was basically uh, a bust cake of Jim Bowie himself. So we overcame a lot of challenges with this particular cake because Jim Bowie has been passed for quite some time. So there's not a whole lot of, uh, of photographs of Jim Bowie. In fact, most of the reference photos that we looked at are paintings and those kind of things. Uh, and it's really difficult to get a 360 view of, of Jim Bowie. Um, so one of the biggest challenges, I think, is, is getting a lot of those 2D imagery right, into a 3D type sculpture. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the materials and timing of those kind of things? So there were three of us working on this cake um, for two full days, very long days. And when it comes to cake, you want to make sure it's as fresh as possible. So that's why our timeline is so short. Um, but we had an awesome time. I'm really well known for my bust cakes, and we tried our best to make it look just like Jim Bowie. I think we did a pretty good job, but you guys can be the judge. Um, I also wanted to mention the flavors. What are the flavors like? Yeah, so the, the flavors, we actually went with a margarita-type influenced flavor. But rest assured, you know, for better or for worse, there's no alcohol in this cake. <laughs> um, but we did actually add some agave nectar into the sponge itself um, to give it some of that flavor that you'll find in tequila sweetness. Um, and we use prickly pear cactus in the buttercream um, that kind of balances out that, that margarita flavor. So we're really excited about the flavor. We, we love the way it tasted. Hopefully you guys love it too. Um, and I think, oh. I just wanted to say we're so honored to be part of this. It's just super amazing. The exhibit is awesome. And just thank you. And hopefully you, you love the cake. <laughs> we'll see it inside. <laughs> So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, just present uh, Richard Oliver um, to say a few words before we get into uh, to take more of this cake. So somebody said cake, so I'll make this quick. I'm Richard Oliver. I'm the Director of Partner and Community Relations at Visit San Antonio. We talk about San Antonio everywhere to everybody to tell people about how special this community is. And you know, one of the great things when we talk, and, and I've had the opportunity to talk about San Antonio all over the world, uh, we try to drive positive media attention for this city, and it starts every single time with the Alamo and, and what, this, what this stands for. It, it kind of gives you goosebumps to be, to be here today knowing what happened here over 150 years ago and what it meant. And Brian mentioned the fact that this, this place was built almost 300 years ago, well next year, San Antonio will celebrate its tricentennial, and it's a very special time for us. This is part of that. This is part of the big countdown in a community that really embraces its history, embraces its culture, embraces its larger-than-life figures. 
and we love uh, to talk about those figures that Jim Bowie certainly ranks in all of those categories. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being in a city that every year welcomes 34.4 million visitors a year. We're the most popular tourism destination in the state, um, and the reason for that is that building right there and what it means, what it stands for, the cradle of Texas liberty and, uh, and the creation of the great state of Texas. So without further ado, thank you again for being here. We've got a wonderful exhibit for you and we've got a celebration ahead as well. So we'll cut this ribbon and get you guys inside. <laughs> These are buoy scissors. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 